views and opinions expressed in this production are those of the individual and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Shooters Nation or our sponsors. Information provided on this show is not a replacement for legal counsel or professional training. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows. Welcome to the Shooters Nation podcast, the show created for you, the armed citizen. Join our hosts and subject matter experts as we talk about guns and gear, practical training and knowledge, Second Amendment issues, and the firearms culture. Be sure to join us after the show at ShootersNation.com and become part of the Shooters Nation. Everybody, welcome to the Shooters Nation podcast. What is the Shooters Nation? By now, you should know that's you. You are the Shooters Nation, and this is the only talk show on the internet that was designed specifically from the ground up for you, the everyday armed American citizen. If you like what you're hearing on the show, we hope that you'll support us. How can you do that? Glad you asked several ways. First, subscribe to us on uh, whichever app or channel you use to listen to the podcast. That'd be a great place to start. Uh, second, Stop right now. Give us a like or a thumbs up or a five-star review or however you shower people with praise on the thing you're listening from. And uh, next, I think we'd like you to uh, share us with your friends. You know, uh, the more the merrier. So last but not least, come on over to ShootersNation.com. That's the hub of all things Shooters Nation. You'll find links to our social media and the full catalog of our shows, complete with supplemental information, all that other fun stuff there. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, U.S. Law Shield, making this episode in, uh, possible in part at any given moment. Situations of self-defense and emergencies can happen to anyone, and unfortunately, the justice system may not always be on your side. While you're protecting your family, U.S. Law Shield is going to be there to defend you 24-7, 365. So visit ShootersNation.com slash U.S. Law Shield to sign up today, and you can receive two free months on an annual membership if you do that. Uh, Mark, man, you know, <laughs> we've practically got nothing else better to do than record a, an episode because man oh man oh man you're not stuck. kidding yeah <laughs> uh. it honestly honestly it sucks because i really do enjoy this just life has been crazy over here oh yeah i bet so um as we record this it is the last day of march 2020 and um damn if i don't miss 2019 just a little bit right now no kidding. We've, uh, uh, the entire world. I mean, God, Mark, how, I, I did, I don't think it was anywhere in my mind whatsoever that we would ever start an episode talking literally about a viral pandemic, which has swept the entire world and has everybody quarantined. And, uh, you know, governments are shutting things down and, and, Telling people to stay at home and shelter in place, and, and you know businesses are shutting. I mean, it's kind of like the, the start of The Walking Dead. Except, yeah, in so many ways, I like I go into this mindset of like, this is scary, this is real, this is happening, and yeah. then the next day, I'll 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 kind of flip, and I'll be like, I think maybe everybody is overreacting. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, and and I think it's like because I want to think that, yeah, maybe. And then it hits me again, like, no, this is this is as real as it gets. Mm. And I have children, I have family that I care for very much, lots of wonderful friends. And then I start, you start thinking about that, and it starts getting scary. Yeah. And I have, you know, parents in their sixties, and parent in laws in their sixties, and you know, one of which has a heart condition. You know, like lots of things just make this very scary very quickly. And then you get updates like we got from, you know, the president today that just makes it even worse. And our local hospital says that they, by estimations, they are going to be 80% short of the beds that are needed. 80%. Like, yeah. um, it's, whoa. And this is a major health system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, everybody knows about Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center, mostly around the country. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like 
when that health system says they're already going to be that short, it's scary. Like what the heck? It's uh, so yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, so we, we've, this year has been challenging for you know, both of us for a variety of reasons. You know, you, you've been extraordinarily busy with work and man, you know, since this kicked off, I know you've, you've really been burning at both ends and right in the middle. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and for me, you know, my family, you know, having, you know, we've expanded the family and all that fun stuff. And, and, you know, it was January, February were pretty, pretty busy, but I would have never dreamed that we would head into March and, um, you know, the whole thing would be turned on its ear and here we are, but, uh, we've been keeping, t- uh, keeping track and keeping tabs and keeping in touch with our, our audience members. And, uh, um, you know, like our extended family and our extended circle of friends, you know, on, on, uh, social media. And that's been good. Um, it, it, you know, folks, really, if you're not on Facebook, uh, and, and a member of the Shooters Nation community, you really need to do that. Uh, you know, our, our recording cadence, I don't even know how it's going to happen. I, yeah. I, I kind of wonder, is it going to pick up? Is it going to slow down? Is it going to be about the same, uh, you know, with everything going on, but, um, you know, we're definitely more active there because it, you know, it takes seconds to do that where doing a show takes quite a bit of, uh, of prep work, you know? Um, but <laughs> I, I've, I've even thought about lately, maybe we should just, you know, open up a, you know, a, a, like a WebEx, a Zoom, you know, meeting and, and, you know, on some weekend evening and, and open it up to the listeners and whoever wants to show up, we just hang out and we talk and maybe we record it. Maybe, you know, maybe we package it up. Absolutely. Like a round table about uh, preparation and yeah. what we're doing and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How, how's it going for, for you guys out there? And, and um, you know, Mark, you know, you and I've kind of kept in touch uh, as, you know, as best we could, even with just texting or, or messaging back and forth, you know, on Facebook mm-hmm. and things like that. And, you know, um, yeah, I'll say, yeah, my family's doing pretty good right now. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, uh, we're in a good, good spot for the moment. Um, you know, nobody's going hungry. Uh, you know, we got power, uh, you know, the world hasn't completely collapsed. Yeah. You, know, you walk outside and, and, you know, especially on a nice day and there's people in the neighborhood walking. And what's weird about that is, man, there's, they're like, they are distancing themselves as they walk, you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, you'll see a family unit kind of walking together. And, and then, you know, five minutes later, here comes another one and, you know, that kind of stuff. And if they see each other as they pass on the road, they, they each stay on their side of the road walking and they don't, they don't, you know, nobody meets in the middle of the road anymore to, to, you know, talk. People are yelling, you know, shouting, you know, conversations with each other from across driveways and things like that. That's sad. Um, but yeah, we're good. I mean, I guess you guys are good right now too, right? Yeah, no, I mean, we're good, but uh, it, it, it's that awkwardness when, you know, you're at the post office and you're used to seeing an old timer that you would always make good eye contact with, shake his hand, show some respect and, yeah. and tell him hello. And now it's this weird distance that you need to keep in it. And it almost feels disrespectful yeah. to not do that for me. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm yeah. the guy that um, walks up to a, to a, you know, like I, ha- I uh, um, met with a, a local ham radio expert mm. recently to mm-hmm. get some guidance on some stuff. And Alan's a really good guy, probably in his late sixties. Um, but like, I want to, th- you know, thank you for your time. Thank you for showing me the ropes, you know, at six feet, but you know what I mean? It, yeah. it, it feels, it feels almost disrespectful to not, you know, shake his hand, look him in the eye and say, thank you. You know what I mean? Yep. You know, it's just like that, that one thing that I'm used to doing that I, it just feels weird. It feels awkward. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate and, and it's awkward. I went to the post office today to drop off packages for squared away customs and there's tape four feet from the counter. They have clear plastic up on PVC pipe draped down and it's in a sign that says stay behind the line until you're asked to move forward mm. if and when you're asked to move forward mm-hmm. i was just like okay well this is weird too so i'm standing four feet away i'm kind of like yelling my business up to them it's like i'm <laughs> dropping off these packages and picking up those packages you know it's like uh, man, it's some just... sort of weird dystopian science fiction thing you know it's yeah. like a movie that we've watched i, I as you were saying, you're describing, you know, the meeting with Alan and, and the fact that people, 
you know, you're, we're not shaking hands with each other. Not supposed to, you know, and stuff like that. I, it occurred to me that you, know, you, you turn on the news. If you're, if you're stupid, you turn on the news and you watch it and, and it really just, you know, just gets in your head. But you know, we turn on the news because we need to know what's going on. And, um, you know, the whole world is going through this and, and you know, we kind of got to have to watch it spread kind of slowly from China and, and work its way across Europe, you know, Asia and Europe. And then finally it's, we started seeing cases of it here in, in the U S and in a way I've never felt maybe more connected and more, you know, having more in common with people on the other side of the world than I do now. But then I've also not felt as distant from people that I'm six, you know, seven feet from as I am now. You know, you see neighbors that you normally you'd walk up, you pat each other on back, you know, uh, you know, shake a hand, whatever. And, and now it's like, I can't, you feel like, you know, I, I can't touch you. You know, there's, there's not, contact's not allowed. So now we're even more distant to the people or from the people that we're closest to, you know, outside of our, our families. And just, the whole thing just sucks, you know, but um I've, I've been doing this a lot. I, yeah, I don't know about you for work, but um, you know, the we you know, of course the I assume the audience kind of knows that, that you and I are not in the same state. You're in New Hampshire. I'm in Tennessee, and uh, you know, so we use a, a video conferencing system to to see each other and and record the, the episode. Mm -hmm. But man, I've been doing this a lot. Like yeah, you know, a whole lot. I've I had to teach my 12 year old daughter how to Zoom because she's taking her classes through it. You know, I. It's kind of neat, I guess, in a way. I think, man, you know, once this is all over with and life goes back to normal, um, you know, we've got a whole lot of new tools that we can take back, you know, to uh, everyday life. And yeah. the argument that you need to be in a brick and mortar office together to get work done kind of got sunk. Yeah, you know, it took a big torpedo, uh, you know, about two, three weeks ago for my for my team and my company. You know, we worked a lot from remote anyway, um, but uh, man, we we went hardcore, hundred percent remote. I guess three weeks ago, maybe, you know, it's three weeks ago now. And uh, right before it kind of exploded here in the U.S., I worked for um, a very large healthcare provider, uh, very large. And, you know, we've got hospitals all over the United States and, and you know, a couple outside of the United States. And, um, you know, we've been kind of aware of what's going on before. I think maybe we're taking it a little bit more seriously than than some people were before it it began to make the news heavily here in the States. And yeah, we kind of got the the speech one Wednesday, like, "Hey, get your get your laptops and get your stuff, and need y'all out of here and, and prepare not to come back to you know the office for you know weeks." Um, I think then it was like a couple weeks, and and now it's like you know we may not see the office again for another month or two, um, which is kind of surreal. But yeah, you know, we do this every day. We we WebEx or, or you know um, Zoom or video conference with each other, and. Uh, and we're still getting work done. You know, we're still taking care of things, and it's pretty awesome trying to you know, help the folks on the front line, out in the hospitals and the you know the clinics and stuff dealing with this mess. But um, I, I tell you, I don't I don't get very much uh, of a break away from Corona these days. It's in my face twenty four seven. Um. So yeah, this is fun. I'm glad that we're here, and and you know I, I wanted to make sure that we recorded you know, something this week because. Um, I think as we told folks on social media, we want to record something, but it's probably gonna be the same crap you've heard people talk about a lot lately. Um, it just may be some voices that, you know, are familiar and hopefully you like to hear us. So there you go. Um, besides that, it's a good diversion, you know, we're going to talk about guns and stuff for a little while. Absolutely. <laughs> that's the thing um, that's been in your face for 24 hours a day for the past two weeks. Right. So. Yeah. So as I mentioned on the show before, um, I'm a national sales rep for one of the largest wholesale distributors in the country. And what's happened in the gun business in the last two weeks has never been seen before. Um, sales that have reached levels that literally have never happened before. Um, and, I, and it's really hard to put it into perspective for people, the the quantities that we're referring to, but like multiple times, you know, five times stronger than a busy Black Friday. You know what I mean? Like massive numbers. Um, the company I work for has a warehouse that's fully robotic. 
And typically when I put an order in a ship status, it can be landing on a truck in a, you know, average of 25 to 35 minutes. Right now we are booking out seven to 10 days Holy cow. before it ships. Yeah. And these are robots, right? I mean, this yeah. is not like human error. They don't get tired. Guys tired. Yeah. yeah. They don't get tired. They work around the clock and yeah, the volume is staggering. Um, and it started out oddly as the first grab was cheap shotguns, huh. cheap, shorter barreled shotguns. So shock waves, anything 18 inches. And then it went to like 20 inch and then it went to like 22 inch. And then it kind of stalled because it's like a 24 inch shotgun for home defense is, is an issue, right? So it kind of stalled on shotguns and then it transitioned to cheap nine millimeter pistols. So Taurus, um, you know, uh, entry level nine millimeter pistols, then 40 pistols, then 45 pistols. And then it started going to more expensive pistols. And then by day three of the panic, every nine millimeter pistol for the most part was sold out of our inventory, which is very large inventory. Um, Every nine millimeter pistol for the most part was gone. Um, at least anything that was under like $750 dealer cost. Right. Yeah. Was gone. So every Glock is gone. It's, it's, it's <laughs> unreal. And so, then when we talk about ammunition, um, that's when it really went crazy. So when the guns were gone, then it's like, then the ammo was massive. And I'm talking dealers that would normally place a weekly order of about a thousand dollars with me. Yeah. We're writing checks for $30,000. And they're selling every bit one of it. order. Yeah. And it's sold before they receive it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm talking like a 30 time increase yeah. in one week. It's, it's not. So, so two questions about that. The first question that occurred to me as you're saying it, I remember what it was like in, Kind of like the, well, yeah, I mean, in, in the industry, not not in the sales part of it, but, you know, just in the, in the firearms industry from a community perspective, um, social media and stuff like that back in, I guess, what was it, 2012 was the Sandy Hook shooting um, in Newtown, Connecticut. And, you know, it went nuts. Um, I, I think I've said on the show before that, you know, the, the website, or two that I owned at the time. And one of which I still do um, experience exponential growth. You know, we, we were connecting people with, uh, you know, other people to, you know, do in-person private party sales. We weren't, you know, we weren't an FFL, but we connect people to each other and they could go do a you know, private party sale. Um, it was, it was going gangbusters and uh, you know, you couldn't buy an AR 15 for under two grand. And I'm talking like crappy ones, you know, um, Ammo was ridiculously scarce. Uh, you know, handguns, not so much, because I think everybody was really more afraid that President Obama at the time was going to, you know, come after their assault rifles, quote unquote, you know, to use the media's stupid term. So everybody wanted an AR. And then, you know, we saw AKs and, and things like that, you know, go up. And then, of course, the industry surged to meet it. And then, you know, everybody and their mother was making ARs. And then, of course, the economy kind of crashed, and, and you know the, the market for that fell. And especially after Trump was elected, you know, everybody kind of breathed a big sigh of relief. It wasn't Hillary in the in the White House? And uh, you know, we've seen a lot of gun gun stores, at least in the Nashville area, went out of business. Uh, you know, AR-15s are now cheaper than AK-47s, which I never thought we'd ever see that happen. Right. Um, you know, but that's kind of like the last time I remember like this giant tsunami of business at the you know in the two A world. And, and from what I'm seeing now, this eclipses that, which is insane. Um, from what I'm hearing for the most part. So I was, I was running a shop yeah. in those times. So I know what it was from that angle, but what dealers are telling me that we're in it then and now is that this is three times that. That's insane. Just, <laughs> but I, the difference is the biggest difference is, is that was hugely focused on high capacity magazines and, and, and quote unquote assault rifles. Yeah. You know, black rifles, body exporter rifles, AR-15s, AK-47s, anything with high capacity magazines, that's where that focus was. Mm -hmm. And then there was some trickle down to the pistol level. This is the opposite. This is the cheapest guns possible. 
right? This is mass quantities of cheap gun. The capacity doesn't matter. They want the cheapest gun because they're first come gun buyers. They okay. don't know. They don't know shit about the gun. Yep. They just know they want a gun to support their home. And that was my second question was, are you, are, you know, it seems like anecdotally, everybody feels like this is first time gun buyers. It is first time gun buyers. I mean, and, and I'm, I'm basing this off optics from having 176 counts sprinkled across the country that I talk to on a weekly basis. Yeah. So, so you're getting so feedback from good, the front lines. Yeah. It's good data from the front lines. Yeah. And they're all saying, these are not people that have ever been in my shop. These are people that walk in and don't understand why they need to wait. These are people that want to be able to order it online and come in and pick it up immediately. <laughs> these are people that thought yeah. that the 4473 was, was something that some shops did and not all of them. Yeah. Man. You know, these are, you know, that's what these people are. Uh, welcome to um, the party. A lady, yeah. a, a lady walked up to the counter in one of the shops and she put a box of, uh, I think it was, I forget what he said, Barnes bullets. So just the bullets, not oh, yeah, for reloading. just the bullets. Right. Yep. For reloading. She puts the bullets on the counter and said, um, my husband said to go down and get the cheapest box of these, whatever the caliber was bullets. And he goes, well, these are just the bullets, man. This isn't the ammunition. She goes, nope. He specifically said he needs bullets. We just bought a gun and he just wanted the cheapest bullets for just in case. And he's like, yes, man, but these are not, this is not ammunition. These are bullets. And she got all snarky with him, all condescending and demanded that he sell the bullets. He's like, will do, ma'am. You know what I mean? It's just like yeah. not a clue in the world. Yeah. And here they are just out there with guns. And oh, it's... it's it's kind of scary. You know, there's, there's, there, well, there's a, there's a, a much bigger thing, you know, that I'm looking at. It's like, there's going to be accidents. Uh -huh. That's the and, scary part. And the worst case about it is not only is it going to be an accident and somebody's going to get hurt, but it's going to look bad on the 2A community when these aren't 2A community people. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of conflicted on that. Uh, you know, I, we need more gun owners. And, and now I, I look at this and I see maybe a ray of hope, you know, some optimism in this, in this whole, COVID-19 pandemic is that people that previously thought no one in a, in a modern civilized society needs a gun. And now they're realizing that the civility of society is, is, is delicate and easily damaged and, you know, doesn't apply to everybody 24 hours, a day, 365 days a year. And it's like, well, hell, I need a gun. You know, like, yeah, you do. Everybody does. You should have one. Get some training, please, you know, you know, learn how to use that thing, uh, you know, responsibly. But yeah, you do. And, and by the way, remember this in, in a year and vote like you need a gun, you know? Um, well, here's another angle. Another thing that I picked up on is that we're out of nine millimeter pistols, but we have plenty of lock boxes. Yeah. Hearing protection, uh, eye protection. Yeah. You know, we have all of that stuff. They're planning People on never using that. it, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I guess that's it. They're planning on not needing to use it, which is silly. Um, well, hell, you well, know, so whether you need to use the gun or not, you still need a lockbox yeah, for it when it's yeah, in your absolutely. home if you're a responsible gun owner. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know that, the, you know, I hate to use the, I don't know, the terms like pathology. The pathology of this whole thing is, is pretty fascinating, right? When you think about what's happening and, and what people are buying and, and, uh, I'm like, I'm like staring off in the corner up here, like, like looking at the, I don't know, some spot on the wall thinking, you know, thinking through this, lost in thought. And, and you know, that's, that's interesting. You know, but hell, in, in Tennessee, and I guess other parts of the country too, about I don't know three weeks ago, the the rumor was on on and again social media. It seems like is you know the evil of of all things. It the the, the rumor was, hey, there's gonna be a shortage of toilet paper, and this is like right when you know COVID nineteen was was coming into the United States because of people that had traveled internationally. And there weren't that many cases. And, you know, I think like in, in my company, you know, in the, in the hospitals, we had like, like 10, you know, tens of cases, you know, not, not very many at all. And, you know, there's a run on toilet paper. So they said, Hey, there's gonna be short of to uh, toilet paper. People went out and made damn sure that there was a shortage of toilet paper. You know, they, they, they're walking out of Costco with, you know, entire buggies full of 48 packs of Charmin, like multiple. Eight. <laughs> Seven months worth of toilet paper. Yeah, and that might be. they 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 cleaned out the the local grocery stores of that, and and yeah, I remember seeing people posting this stuff like local photos of local grocery stores. Like, you can't buy a thing of Charmin or a box of Kleenex, but look at all the food, you know. And and now, 
that's not even a thing. You know, the people, um, I think folks in, 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 you know, states that are prone to having hurricanes, they, they understand this, you know, the, like I've heard some folks say that, you know, yeah, this is like it is in Florida. And anytime they announce a hurricane, you know, the, the folks that are new to it go and they clean out the, you know, in, in Florida, it's the public's grocery stores. And, uh, yeah, a few weeks later, you know, they can get filled back up, but yeah, I've got like, that doesn't happen in middle Tennessee. And, and, you know, just before the week that this happened, you know, we, we got Nashville got you know, pretty well annihilated parts of it did with, uh, you know, a tornado that, that ripped through the, the, the mid state. And I think it ran something like 50 to 60 miles and, and just laid waste to, you know, a lot of things, 20, 30 plus people were killed by it. And, you know, it just, it destroyed a lot of Nashville and, you know, so we were already reeling from that. And then now all of a sudden we're reeling from shortages of toilet paper. And then, you know, eventually it kind of creeps into food. And next thing you know, the, the grocery stores look like, look like they hadn't even opened yet. You know what it looks like when you, like you peek through the window of a store that's about to open and there's no stock mm-hmm. on the shelves and it's just like empty. You know, all you see is, you know, rows and rows and rows of glistening shelves with nothing on them. That's what it looked like. And you know, you, you saw it, I guess, it, you know, it, that became a national phenomenon or, or maybe regional. I guess it's national now. And then, you know, you hear the, the people at the, you know, that, that run the grocery you know, companies like Kroger is a, you know, pretty big chain here and, and, you know, Publix and stuff. They're saying, look, there's food, there's plenty of food in our warehouses. Like they're showing photos of warehouses full of food and it's just like fucking cut it out. Right. I mean, you know, we've got mm-hmm. food. If you guys would let it go. The supply chain would catch up and, and everything would be good. But yeah, now it's created this vicious cycle that that and I guess it's the same way with the gun industry, with with ammo and, and you know firearms and things like that, is as soon as a little bit makes it on the shelf and there's a glimmer of hope that it's about to settle down, people come in and they just go stupid and they buy up every bit of it, even if they don't need it. Mm. Yep. And so it's frustrating. It, it's it's just I don't know. Like I said, the pathology of the whole thing is is pretty insightful. It, it, and I think anybody that's listening, you know. Mark, we've been saying from day one, kind of like, you know, you're your own first responder. You know, you can't count on the police to be there, um, you know, to, to, to stop a thing. They're going to be reactionary always. You know, and that, the same goes true for the EMS and the fire and whatever. But, you know, man, if there was ever a, a, a test run or a dry, dry run or a test rehearsal or, you know, whatever to like, hey, you know, this should get your attention, folks, that, you know, it takes a, a day or two for an entire grocery store to be wiped out of everything down to the toilet paper. And then you're on your own to survive. You know, it's just, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's eye opening. It, it's made me change my prep plan. How about you? Have you adjusted your prep plan any? You know, I, I prepared for so many different things and thought about them long and drawn out and kind of like i have this and it's kind of put together and it's like here it is and i'm never gonna need this but it's cool to say i have it done and then it's like this is happening i'm like holy shit like on those days when i feel really horrible about it and i feel like this is getting scary yeah i just find myself like going over kit going over you know, where I have stuff stowed, going over what I have in back stock, going over, you know, stockpiling gasoline in my spare garage. Yeah. Um, You know, and now I'm buying it at $1.80 to a gallon. Like, I wish I had waited a few weeks because I started (laughs) this a couple weeks ago. Well, that was a great time to travel and, and, you know, yeah, it's, there's a lot of things that are cheap right now because nobody's using them, right? But yeah, I want to get some of those big, those steel diesel cans for the back of my truck with the crank on them and the mm-hmm. nozzles. So like filling up tractors, I got to get a couple of those and fill those up with gas now. Uh, um, but man, it's just like, I, I feel like I'm never quite prepared enough. Yeah. And, you know, I'm doing simple little things like I was at CBS when this kind of f- first was starting to flare up. And I remember I was checking out. Um, this was when the, when there was a run on hand sanitizer, right? Oh yeah, so yeah. I went there yeah. to get hand sanitizer and and some like Clorox wipes and like that sort of thing, and failed miserably. And I just happened to like look over out of the corner of my eye and I saw a track phone sitting there, and I'm thinking to myself like we have 
a few tablets with data plans, a couple Apple watches with data plans, four cell phones with data plans and unlimited minutes. And we have a $500 a month cell phone bill. Yeah. If this really goes bad and one or both of us are out of work and, and, you know, savings is dwindling and it's time to really crack down and pinch pennies. One of the first damn things to go is probably <laughs> going to be a $500 a month cell phone bill. Right. So I bought a track phone and a bunch of cards for it. You know what I mean? It cost me, you know, if, you know, if the phone was 20 bucks and bought a bunch of minutes for it. I was just like, I'm just going to stick this in a box somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like maybe this will come in handy. And by the time that I'm going to need it, so will everybody else and there won't be one to be had. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's just like, just trying to think of like outside the box. That's smart things though, man. That, I, I didn't even thought about that. You know, just there's little things that, you know, it's like, what if, what if my wife's like at first was just like, man, I think you like this crap. It's like, no, I hate this. I hate it. Yeah. You know, like I literally hate, I want life to be normal. Like, and this is not that. And I want to go see my parents, but I know it's not good for them. Oh God! Yeah. I want to, you know, it was like, and I know you had a similar struggle, you yeah. know, and, and it's, and it just sucks, you know, like my dad is retired and he just had a major knee op had a complete knee replacement uh, mm. five weeks ago. And I'm feeling that he's just, yeah. he's just getting up and about and right. just gets up and about. And now he's got to quarantine himself at home. He's been yeah. stuck in the house five weeks. You know what I mean? So right. it's like, That's a real he's like, he calls me every day and he's like, well, yeah. The 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 house. I'm like, I'm like, geez. Man. And <laughs> yeah, I so do you I mean, you know, you, you said that I think yeah, I, I hope I'm not gonna get you in trouble here, but yeah, you know, I know that when we chatted I don't know, about two weeks ago, you said, you know, you, you asked me, you said, Hey, how are you doing on on you know supplies? And I think you were even talking about like ammo and stuff. And I said, Yeah, I'm I'm pretty good right now. I'm setting yeah, you know, I ordered a couple of things and and <laughs> like some of those orders got canceled, which was a real you know lovely treat from Bass Pro Shop and Academy Sports. Thanks a lot. But uh, you know, I've I still got enough, right? I got I got more than I I got more than a lot of people do. And um, you know, I kind of like, well, do you ever have enough ammo? Probably not. But yeah, I asked you, I was like, how about you? How's the prepping going? He said, I've been prepping like a like a madman for the past week. You know, like you were adjusting your your strategy at that point. And I think you said that, yeah, your 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 wife thought you were a bit of a loon at first until like the news really started to talk about how bad it was. And then suddenly she's like, Yeah, okay, maybe you're not as loony as you thought, you know, as I thought you were. Right. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I think. My prediction is if uh, if if you're listening to this and and you know you ever got crap from your significant other or your family or friends about being a quote unquote prepper, I bet they're not going to give you much crap after this. You know. No. Yeah. You know, no. Exactly. A lot easier yeah, to. And the thing about it is, it's like when you watch the the prepper show, like that's not me. No. You know what I mean? Well, I'm not they, that person, and I and I and I, and I, I don't have a problem with those people, but no. I, that's just not me. I, I'm. I'm much more of a last minute prepper, like see this coming down the road. Now yeah. I'm going to prep for it right. real quick. I'm not always prepped like, this, right. You know, which is probably wrong. Cause there's probably some things that I would like to be a little bit more proficient with right yeah, now sure. that I'm maybe not necessarily. And we've been talking about one and that's like ham radio. Yeah. Um, perfect example right there is because ham radio, you need to be licensed in order to transmit on, on the frequency. Unless it really hits and, the fan and then you're okay. But yeah, we can talk about that some other episode, maybe real soon, but yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that's a perfect example is I'm not licensed and the next license testing is in June. Mm. And well, ta-da, like here's something I want to be able to be doing right now. And I yeah. can't because I wasn't prepared enough. So, yep. yeah, I mean, I'm totally not prepared as well as I'd like to be, but I'm doing, I'm chipping away at it every day. And a hundred percent, my wife, I think officially is finding me less loony by the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I'm going to say though, Right. In all fairness, um, you know, the, the, the wives, you know, they're, they're kind of like the anchor to reality. They are for me at least, you know, I mean, Sandy, you know, I say they, like I've got like numerous, but I mean, yeah, I got the one, um, you know, she keeps me anchored to reality. Yeah. You know, pretty good. Sometimes brutally like, you know, no, you can't afford that. Here's why, you know, or no, you can't do that. Here's why, or no, we don't need that. Here's why. And, and you know, I always wince and just, you know, cuss under my breath. Cause I know that the, here's why, it's going to be legit. It's going to be logical. She's going to be right. It's going to piss me off. But, um, you know, we, we'd always done pretty good as far as having, you know, the basics around until you start thinking, okay, this is going to go beyond like here in, in Tennessee, you know, we don't get like s severe winters where we might get snowed in. So we need to stock up. We don't get, uh, you know, we're not like 
earthquake prone. So that's not a thing. You know, really the, the thing for us is, uh, you know, tornadoes and, mm-hmm. you know, the footprint of a tornado is pretty, pretty big and pretty damaging, especially if you're the one that it stepped on, but, um, they don't wipe out the entire region's supplies of stuff. Right. And so, um, you know, thinking through it, you know, in the back of my mind, it's like, well, we don't prep like that for a tornado because, you know, in a week or two, the power is going to be back on. And, and, you know, you can always go somewhere else with friends and family who weren't in the path of the tornado and, and yeah, that kind of stuff. So it's like, it's like a, it's like acute damage. It's acute. Right? It's a, it's very acute. You're exactly right. And, and so this is a totally different thing. And, um, you know, we've got, you know, I, <laughs> I'm going to talk about something that I, I swear I haven't even talked to Sandy about. Um, not, not like in a focused conversation. I think she and I may do a, a, a recording sometime soon to talk about what this is like from a married couple's perspective. And, you know, man, Mark, if you and Kristen sit down with a recorder of some sort, or even just your iPhone and record something similar, you know, we'll, we always throw an episode together around it. But, um, you know, the, the thing that she's probably struggled with a lot is that we've got a, we, you know, we've got a child, we've got a two-year-old son that is, um, like insanely allergic to anything with dairy and anything with soy. And I man, if you think that's not going to impact your world, you know, even like in good times, go look at the back of, of like, you know, pick up 20 random food items at the grocery store and look at the back of them, see how many of them have some dairy, some, it doesn't matter if it's like milk, anything dairy, anything that came from a cow, um, you know, or soy and like probably I'd be surprised if all 20 things that you had in your hand don't get thrown back on the shelf. You know, maybe you'll get one or two, but that's our daily life with him. Like if he eats any of it, you know, it, it causes like bleeding stomach ulcers and, and, you know, things like that. Like he's just doubled over in pain. Um, and you know, we, we have to, we have to shop around that and, and you know, we have to mm-hmm. pick restaurants around that. And, uh, you know, our, our eating out has, has really kind of narrowed down to, okay, what are we going to get for us? And then let's stop by Wendy's and get chicken nuggets and fries for him because they don't, they don't even cook their stuff in soy oil, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. I mean, it, it's really weird, but yeah, you know, right now, man, like you're lucky if you get some food period from the grocery store. And now we're going to be hyper specific and say, no, it can't have soy. It can't have dairy. You know, I needed this exact brand. Um, I, I honestly don't know how my wife has kept her sanity in this because that's the kind of stuff that we should have stocked up on and we didn't, you know? And, and so now we're having to get it as we can. And, and, you know, he's, he's happy. He has no clue that this is going on. Right. I mean, none at all. Sure. Other than yeah. the fact that he's cooped up in the house and driving us all crazy, but, um, you know, it's up to us to keep him fed and alive. And, um, and man, it just, you know, it'll stress you out thinking about it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, the prepping thing for me, I'm definitely adjusting my plan moving forward. Yeah, you know, I told my wife we're gonna we're gonna have to make some room in one of the, you know, parts of the house and and more canned goods. We've gotten away from canned food because yeah, you know, stuff's not super healthy for you. And, and yeah, I'm not like the the you know, I'm not a pillar of health and fitness, but um, we uh, yeah, you know, we got rid of a lot of that crap because it's like that stuff's loaded up with things that you don't really want to put in your body. Well, that's mm-hmm. probably the reason why that stuff survives as long as it does on the shelf too. So, right. Um, you know, we're going to have to adjust. Um, well, one thing's for sure. My wife may think I'm a loon for all the things that I'm doing, but our two year old son has diapers until he gets to the sixth grade right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> how like every day there's a Walmart box, there's an Amazon box, yeah. there's a target box. Hey man, it's like take no all chances. diapers. I'm like, what the hell are right. we going to, where are we going to put them all? Like, um, so, uh, and I've officially, as of today, I've dubbed her, um, as far as the kitchen and the food thing goes as my supply chain manager. Nice. Nice. She yeah. Accepted that title. Nice. And, uh, she's doing really well on it. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, that's awesome. I, if it were up to me here in my house, we'd probably, you know, we'd have bullets, but we'd be screwed on everything else. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's just so many different, it's like, you, it's, it's really, it's really easy to look in basically any direction in your home and be like, we're going to need more of this. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like 
we can't sustain three months without shopping and going to buy this. Right. We don't have three months supply of anything. Right. So it's just a dynamic that uh, none of it, nobody here are used to. No, I know that our you know friend and previous show guest, Jason Demo, you know, he, he talked about it on social media a little bit um, recently and said that he's always kind of tried to be pretty well prepped, you know, just living in Florida and, you know, dealing with kind of weather and stuff down there that they do. But uh, he said that like for him, he was going to adjust maybe his prepping to include more things that he finds himself um, being asked for or feeling like he needs to give away to friends and family that maybe aren't as well prepared. And um, man, you talk about like, that's a good dude, right? Cause I'm, I, I love my fellow man and, and, and all that, but you know, man, if, like I said, I, there's certain things that like, I have to be very specific about what my son can eat. And if that's what we're down to, and I got somebody that you know isn't family that, that, you know, wants some of it. No, you know, cause I, you know, I can't. And, and family first, yeah. Family first. Uh, yeah. It's just, I don't know. It's kind of, Kind of weird. I can't even believe they were having this conversation. Really, it's, it's, it's like, um, hmm, yeah. Um, I you know we, I think my daily. No- yeah, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say I'm noticing a lot more friends on social media planting gardens. That's something I want to want us to do, and I'm not like a super big you know, salad, vegetable eater. I like, I like certain veggies, but it, like, I, you know, if, if there's a steak and I can either eat steak to I'm full or eat, you know, greens until I'm full, you know, feed the greens to a cow. I'll come get the cow in a couple of months. I, I want the steak. Right. right. <laughs> so, um, I, uh, yeah, man, like sustainable food source. Definitely want it. You know, I, I'd love to have a couple of chickens. You know, that kind of stuff has some eggs, it you know, has sources of protein. Um, my, I think the, some of the folks in this HOA that I live in are going to shit kittens when they start stealing. Like, you know, we're going to, we're going to do a garden, you know, get some chickens out, out back, you know, <laughs> maybe a goat. I don't know. I, mean, yeah. you know, I, I just kind of wonder, right. How many people are going to, how much of this is going to adjust daily life for a lot of people afterwards? And, and how many things that we've kind of like artificially made important like HOAs and restrictions and, and stupidity like that are going to fall away. And, and, you know, people kind of go, yeah, you know, I want to be a little bit more sustainable, you know? Um, well, you know what I think? I think a vast majority of the younger population is not going to learn a damn thing. And that's disheartening. Maybe you're right. I mean, if you look at the, at the news stories, the idiots that go partying, you know, the beach in the middle of the coronavirus and, you know, like, like, they're going to nightclubs and stuff in Nashville on lower Broadway, which is a tourist trap anyway. So, you know, pro tip for you guys out there listening, if you like country music, stay away from, from Broadway, you know, Nashville, Broadway. I mean, it, yeah, you're going to get all that. You're going to get the experience. You can walk around in your boots and your cowboy hat, whatever else, but it's just, it's stupid. That's not really what being like country is like in Nashville. The locals don't go down there. Um, except apparently some of them were because, you know, they're on social media giving, you know, the, the establishment, the middle finger, you yeah, don't tell me what not to do. I'm going to go to a nightclub and hang out with a bunch of sweaty, you know, people and touch things that they've touched and breathe their polluted air. And, you know, I'm invincible. And then a week or two later, they've got, you know, COVID, <laughs> you know, they're, they're in the hospital and like, thanks a lot. Now you've also, you know, it, the, 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 the really th- bad thing about exponential math is it seems like a lot of people are bad at math and they don't understand how exponents work and that, you know, if one person touches two and then they go out and touch two, and then they go out and touch two, you know, it just, it, it rapidly spreads on a logarithmic scale and not, it's not like, you know, a nice little straight line of, Oh, I, you know, it's only me that's sick. And maybe, you know, the people I live with, and it's like, no, it's not the way this works. Um, so yeah, it, I don't know. I think you're right. The younger people, the younger generation may not, but there's a lot of folks that are our age and older, you know, 40 to 50 you know, plus that are just stupid about this too. And, and, you know, like there, there still are on, you know, the, the end of, at the end of March, there are still COVID deniers is what I'm going to call them. You know, or COVID truthers out there that, you know, like, no, this is all, this isn't really what's going on. This is the government trying to, you know, to manipulate us or whatever else. And, and yeah, yeah I've, I don't know. Um, you've been watching the White House daily briefings by any chance? No. No. Those are entertaining. 
Um, I read the headline and then, uh, you know, kind of move on. I feel like the more that I, the more I, I watched them just like, it's just, a, I'm not in denial that it's happening, but yeah. like, I know that it's happening. Right. The, the constant reminder isn't much for me. So I'm just reading about <laughs> right. it as I have time. Yeah. I, you know, a uh, coworker got me kind of hooked on watching them. You know, we'll, we'll sit here, you know, we're working from remote, you know, we're, everything's online. I'll get a little blip, you know, message pops up and it's like Trump speaking. I flip around to my personal laptop, open it up. You know, we're kind of sitting there watching it, trading things back and forth. And I think a lot of folks are listening to it and, you know, being very critical of Trump, rightfully so perhaps. And, and you know, they're like, you know, the guy's an idiot. And he's not handling it well. He's changing his story day after day after day after day. And, you know, I, I'm kind of looking at it almost, and I don't feel like this is naive because I, I, I was very critical of him for the first week or two. And I thought, yeah, you know, they're right. This guy is an idiot. Um, but then I, I stepped back and realized what we're watching, in my opinion, is a is a guy that isn't good at politics, isn't polished, you know, isn't a career, you know, slickster um, in a in a you know in in a political arena. He, he wasn't like born and bred in it like Obama and others are. They're just like calm and calm, you know, yeah, you know, they always get the right word. And, you know, they're very measured in their in their statements and stuff. He's just he's a businessman, and, and you know he's he's I mean, he's kinetic. You know, like today he's like he's a he's on. The, top of the world he's at a high you know we got this thing by the tail we're going to conquer it tomorrow he comes in he's like well crap i was wrong about all that <laughs> you know and um yeah it's a bit of a merry grow around and maybe that's not what you want your commander in chief you know you want your commander in chief to have a vision and, and you know hold the hold the line you know, we're, we're we're steady as she goes and he's he's kind of like right there with us reacting to everything that's coming in day after day but he's surrounded with a lot of smart people so i don't know i kind of look at it and think well damn at least he's honest you know he's not trying to candy coat it um, well, you know, I hear I have some some significant left leaning family, okay, and I hear them bitching, and I'm just like, you realize that he is essentially repeating what people are telling him, yes. right? Yes, like exactly. these are not decisions he's making. Right. This is not data he's collecting. He is a you know essentially a teleprompter to us. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Like well, he is not yeah. responsible for this. These are not all decisions he has made. Right. You know, and I'm just like, you know, people. Not to mention, nobody else has had to deal with this. No, that's exactly we right. Didn't have these things in play. Yeah. We didn't have a plan prior to this. Shame on us, but we didn't. I. You know, and you're right. What do you want from the guy? No. I mean, you know. I, I I may have snapped at somebody recently, and and you know, <laughs> maybe in a work setting, <laughs> and they were kind of like. <laughs> Super critical of the guy. And I was like, you know what, man? It, it's a shame that you're not in Washington right now. They are totally missing out on all your potential and your wisdom and your knowledge. <laughs> like, you know, you need to go right now. Just, just, I will just go, just go. I'll take care of whatever it was you're working on. Just go and, and save the country from this and save the country from Trump. And, you know, the response was kind of like, man, you're an asshole. <laughs> and I was like, no, yeah. I mean, I'm just so tired of hearing you people. You know, like I, I'm, I'm not smarter than the guy and I'm definitely not smarter than the, than the, the people he surrounded himself with. But, you know, for Pete's sake, I, I, I'm also a little self-aware. I don't, I don't think I have all the answers, but damn, if people don't think that they do. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, ah, switching gears. Cause we, I think we could talk about this forever and I want to give people an escape from it. I bought a gun. I got a new gun, Mark. Well, like, I, there's part of it. I think we should touch on too. Okay. Okay. All and right. before, before we scoot out of here, and it's something that's been brought up to me on a, on a fairly regular basis about, you know, me preparing for me doing this, me doing that. And, and what I keep stressing is that my biggest concern is not the disease. Mm, yeah. My biggest concern is other people that were not prepared's reaction <laughs> yeah. to the disease. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so once, you know, we'll call him, you know, Jim and his family is out of food. Yep. And he's been laid off from his job and he lives down the street and there is no more money and he has children. Easy to put you yourself know? in that. It's, it's very easy to put yourself in Jim's shoes. I'm, I'm going to say that right now. It's a, Dirty, gross feeling to have yep. deep in your soul when you think about being in that position and yep. what you're going to do for your family. Yep. And 
I will. It's some scary shit, man. I mean, yeah. What is what's the quote? I will do great and terrible things for those that I love. Mm-hmm. Jim would. I would if I were Jim. You know, if I'm in that position, God help me. If if you know, and that's the thing, right? Is I, man, I really hope that I'm never put in that in that spot. But yeah, you know, I'm probably better prepared to deal with it from a violence perspective than you know a lot of the gyms in the world are, right? Mm-hmm. And and so are you. And so are a lot of the people that we live, you know, that we talk to and you know, that we hang out with and, and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I, I kind of like, you know, half heartedly like, Hey, let's jump on another subject, but I, I think you're right. Um, you know, we didn't need to talk about that. I, you know, so we live out in the middle of the country in, in, you know, pretty rural, you know, outside of Nashville, 30 plus miles away. And, uh, we moved out here intentionally. We wanted quiet. We wanted away from the madness and, you know, the, the hubbub of, of the of town. We wanted out of the flight path of the, of the airport, which is hard to do in Nashville because they come in from all different angles. Uh, the planes do when they're landing. So it's kind of like everywhere is the, the, the damn flight path to the airport. Um, you know, we wanted a slower life for our kids. And uh, so we moved out here and, you know, we, we got lucky. There was a, a neighborhood that um, had been developed prior to the big economic crash back in the, in the two thousands or was starting to be developed. And all it was, was just roads and a single house and a lot of land. And so, you know, our developer bought the land and started building, you know, a neighborhood and uh, you know, it's like a neighborhood out in the middle of nothing. And now there's other neighborhoods popping up around us. But, you know, I, I made the comment to Sandy the other day. I said, uh, you know, I, it's kind of funny to think about like everybody else was you know, making the big rush on toilet paper and groceries and things like that. So we were good on groceries. We we're actually good on toilet paper. We didn't need any of those at the moment, but I really feel like there are a couple of things that I want to go ahead and pick up quickly. Um, you know, defensive related, um, you know, ammo. I wanted to tweak a couple of things and, and finish up, you know, some items on, on you know, a couple of my guns, like you know, my, my now go to 10 and a half inch AR quote unquote pistol. Um, it needed a light, you know, cause not all bad things happen during the day. And we've talked about lights before. So I finally broke down and like, damn, it took me a minute to do it. Uh, yeah, bought an owl from cloud defensive, you know, shot, shot Ooh. who, who those guys, yeah, shot, shot that Matt Timbarge dude some money and said, you know, hook me up. Um, and they did, man, they hooked me up quick. And so I got the owl and I put it on the, on the, on the, you know, the gun and it's lovely. I mean, I mean <laughs> talk about a, Hell of a good thought out product. Um, we should do an episode about that one of these days. Wait, we did. Um, but you know, they, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's I, I there were a couple things like that that I wanted. And um, you know, like look, we've got groceries, we've got food, you know, we've got shelter, we've got electricity, you know, we've got toilet paper. Um, I think we're pretty good. I told my wife, I said, what happens when this all goes to crap? And you know, people around us out here in the country that, um, you know, now a lot of those guys are better prepared than we are, I'll say, because they got farms and animals and livestock and gardens and, and things and, you know, wells and what have you. So they're probably better prepared than we are. But you know, there are definitely some around here that are, are, are maybe a little bit more, I hate to use the word impoverished, but I think that's probably the best description. When those people run short on food, you know, would you not head towards the nice neighborhood? Um. And so I was like, I, God, I hope I never have to, you know, have that kind of a confrontation on my property. Mm -hmm. Right. But, you know, like I said, you'll do great and terrible things for the people you love. And, and, you know, I've got three kids and, you know, family and sister-in-law and her husband, they're kind of staying here with us right now. And, and, you know, Hey, let's be honest. If, if society really collapses and whatever, that's, that's my tribe. That's my people. That those are the ones I'm going to, I'm going to protect. Um, yeah, I yeah. Mean, increased lighting, increased, uh, video yeah. around the house and on the property. Um, uh, we live down a three house private drive. So it's, it's called a road. It's a strange thing. It's a, it's called a road, but, uh, it's a private driveway okay. essentially, um, to the three houses down it. And I have a, 72 year old 72 year old dude that lives at the end of the road and he's always been kind of the quiet guy 
but he's very nice. He's a little eccentric, but quiet. And he called me up and he said, Hey, just so you know, the wife and I are going to be shooting nine millimeters this afternoon. And I thought to myself, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Five years, six years I've been here. Had no never idea. heard a piece of gunfire from that man. Right? right. We have a range less than a mile away. He's not a member. Like he doesn't go shoot at the range. All of a sudden he's shooting in the backyard with the wife. And then I come home today and he's walking down the long road slash driveway that we have. And, and I look and then there is a neighborhood watch sign at the end of our road. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. And yeah, good for him. I don't know for a fact, but I assume he was walking back because he had just put it up. Right. You know, you know, like little things, you know, so it's like, like it. you know, it's uh strange times, man. Yeah. It's, uh uh well people are nervous though they are uh, yeah i've seen right. you know um <laughs> at, my, at my you know my company i'm talking about them a lot today it's probably i don't know hope they don't care but uh you know we've got a lot of uh a lot of millennials you know on on another team that's kind of like inside the same family and um you know man uh, first of all i'll say like Hard working. Oh my God. Like being around them for the past six months since I've joined this part of the organization has been good for me. And it's been eye opening because, you know, it's so easy to hear bad things about you know, millennials and, and you kind of, you know, come up with a, you know, with a, with a narrative inside your head of, you know, how, how kids are these days. But damn, these guys are like, and, 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 you know, and ladies are just, they get in there and they kick ass all the time and they work hard and they're driven and, and like super, passionate about what they do and i'm like man this is good well you know two weeks ago and, and kind of like a powwow conversation i was like hey, anybody need anything you know anybody short on groceries or anything that like we can kind of like crowdsource inside of our overall family anybody need and like the one person that i like would never have thought it kind of speaks up with a soft voice and says anybody know where i get some ammo because i'm running low on nine <laughs> and i'm like Holy cow. And, and so, you know, it, it was like, wow, this is kind of cool. You know, people that you normally wouldn't hear talking about things like this, especially in like a professional setting are now talking about it. Cause it's real, right. It, it's, it's, it's kind of visceral now where it's like, Hey, look, you know, let's be honest. We kind of like guns. We like to shoot, you know, may have to shoot an animal to feed ourselves or something, or, you know, may have to use a gun, you know, God forbid to, to protect myself. You might know where I get some ammo. And yeah, that, it's the dynamic has changed a little bit and, in society. So um I just hope that it I hope that's more positive than good. So far I'm seeing more positive changes than than um, more positive than bad, sorry. I'm seeing more positive changes than than negative. Um people are offering to help each other, people are checking in on their neighbors, at least around here, you know, how you doing? Need anything? You know, can we bring anything? Now they're they're if they bring it to you, they're gonna drop it off in your driveway because they're they're not gonna come over and you know hug you and shake your hand and <laughs> stuff like that, right? But um you know, people are at least trying to check in on each other, which is good. Yeah, you know, I hope that it stays that way. I, I don't want to. I don't want to see our, you know, our our really awesome country devolve and start to fray and fall apart because, you know, basic needs aren't being met. Um, I bought a gun. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm changing the subject again. I don't know. Uh, yeah, you know, like I was looking at the calendar just a second ago to figure out when I did it, and I did it. I did it the first. <laughs> I did it the first week of quarantine. Um, I had ordered it like way back in early February, and the people I ordered it from suck so badly. I I want to say their name, but I, I I don't know that I should. They're an online yeah. online retailer. I don't know. I mean, I said locked and loaded. <laughs> they uh if you see them on uh on you know um like gun deals or whatever i just folks you know i'm not gonna tell you not to order from them because i got my gun but go look at the google reviews and, and stuff because it's not real good they're, they're they're like really known for being slow apparently i had to i had to call my bank and and you know the credit card issuer and say hey look we're gonna have to like dispute this charge or you know, reverse it or whatever, you know, whatever the technical term is. And uh, they're like, yeah, cool. No, no, not a problem. And, uh, you know, the bank didn't bat an eye at what it was or anything else. They're like, no, we're going to take care of you. You're, you're our customer. We're going to take care of you. We're going to go to bat for you. And within about three days, I, I finally got a shipping, you know, tracking number from 
the the retailer and like man it took you guys three and a half weeks literally to ship a gun mark i should have called somebody i knew that could have sold me the same gun mark yeah yeah so what is it what is it what is it it, it is, is one of these it is a high point it is a yeet no it is one of those in your hand basically yeah so you're holding up a, a sig p320x compact and so am i so isn't that cool yeah yeah, yeah. it's a it's a neat gun it, it's not a, yeah. not a glock but it, it's a neat little gun um it's my second 320 i had a 320 a couple years ago and um i didn't like it you know, it was a standard 320 compact and the 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 grip felt like a dry bar of soap you know um about as ergonomic as that and it, it would squish around in your hand, it, at least for me, you know, as I shot, it kind of like want to work its way loose in my hand because it just the, 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 you know, the plain Jane 320 doesn't have anything to get good traction on. The X5 or the X, not the X5, the X Compact, the X Series, more ergonomic, or more ergonomic. The grip angle seems like it's a little bit different unless I'm crazy. Um, a little bit more of a palm swell kind of fills your hand better you know, what have you, but I'm still going to get a grip module stippled. I, I, I it, it's still not, it still doesn't have as much grip as a Glock, you know, or even the a, front strap is very slippery. It is. Yeah. Cause of that. Uh, well, I mean, I like the relief that it's got there for your, for your middle finger underneath the trigger guard. Yeah. But why is there no texture in there? That's one of Need your something. biggest points for grip. You know, it's one of your strongest fingers. Yeah, well, it is. It should have some texture there. Yeah. Yeah. Your, 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 you know, ring finger and your pinky don't put as much, you know, compression down on a thing when you squeeze on it yeah so i agree um it is i wish so it looks like these are all uh on the back of the the grip strap you know, it's got an m for medium i assume it's for medium could be for something else. i know it's for medium but anyway you know i it's like man I mediocre think, mediocre yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> marginal marginal yeah that's right the uh <laughs> the marginal grip um the marginal grip module it could be a little bit larger you know i, I feel like if it were an l you know for luxurious or i don't know yeah you know, that would be better but anyway so i've got one coming that's uh, getting worked over by the guys over at uh three golf gun works i'm excited about that but yeah no man the gun itself is pretty neat i like the trigger um trigger's good um feels better than yeah, the other one that I had was kind of spongy. Like, you know, you'd, you'd pull it and you'd hear the, the striker assembly just kind of like a sprung, sprung, sprung. It's like, felt like you're kicking the side of an empty metal wash. Yeah, it doesn't cover. snap. It doesn't feel like the no. striker's snapping forward. No, there's no authority. It just there. kind of clunks. Yeah. yeah it's kind of like, it kind of like meanders towards the primer. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, that's kind of a passive strike. Yeah. Yeah. It's you like, know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. what it always sounds like to me. Yeah. It's almost like, like it should be a black powder gun. Like the feeling of it is like you should you should click it and then you should hear the wick hissing and then it goes off like a second Bang. finger, <laughs> right? <laughs> but um, yeah, it's uh, you know it's, it's a it's a good gun. It's it's a typical Sig. It's got a little bit of a high bore axis because you know Sig doesn't believe in physics, I guess. Um, but uh, I like it. You know, I mean, it, it's not a bad one and it carries really well inside the waistband. You know, I. And this carries well. Um, I was kind of surprised. You know, I've got my my Filster floodlight, which will fit anything as long as it'll hold an X three hundred. So I threw I threw that on there, barely barely made contact with the 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 first pick you know slot, and you know got in there. And it, it carries okay like that. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a neat gun. I like it. it it'll I'll keep it. Um, the Romeo Pro or the Romeo One Pro Red Dot. That's a neat. That's a neat sight. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, they, I, I did a little bit of reading and then, you know, the SIG had gone back and they beefed up the uh, aluminum shroud that covers the the lens after um, Aaron Cowan, I think like the first, <laughs> the first time he dropped, <laughs> dropped the Romeo, it like what? shattered immediately. Right. Um, so yeah, they gave it some armor and that that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, it, it's a, it's a neat one, you know, um, playing around with it. It, yeah, heavy here my hand. I got a TLR7, the Streamlight TLR7A with the the nice rearward controls on the light. And damn, that's a product that should have been done right the first time and wasn't. Um, mm. you know, those switches on the on the tail cap like this are pretty pretty awesome for that little light. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with it. 
Um, yeah, but I'm standing in line at the at the uh, local. I use a pawn shop for my my FFL transfers because they're they're local, real close to me. Um, cheap, good guys. Never super busy, and, and I mean it was like dead when I went in there that day. Uh, I went in right after work on like the first day that the governor of Tennessee had said, "Look, we'd really prefer prefer that you guys stay at home." And kind of they 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 started the quote unquote safer at home initiative. And so, man, you could tell it like this is a busy part of town, and it was dead. And I was able to drive like, yeah, you know, I was playing Grand Theft Auto, and um, yeah, you know, like. You know, pull into the 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 lot real quick, and I'm not I'm not happy about this at all because had it just come in, had it been shipped, you know, two weeks earlier or even just a week earlier, I felt like I wouldn't be bringing you know the bubonic plague back to my family by going out to pick up a gun, and uh, you know I, I whipped in real quick, jumped out, run in the store, uh, you know, and said, hey, you guys transfer for me, and they're like, oh yeah, absolutely, you know, brought it out, it was like here, let's get it in, you know, an hour freaking later, um, my background check finally came through. And man, has it really been taking this long? You know, meanwhile, I'm like in here in the store while random customers come in and out. Every guy that comes in, I'm looking at, I'm going, you've got the plague. You're, gonna, you're the guy that's going to give it to me, right? Um, obviously, I didn't come up with a, <laughs> with a plague, but, you know, I, uh, <laughs> like, you know, an hour. Like, normally it takes five minutes. He goes, dude, it's been this way all weekend. Um, and this was like the week after the, the tornadoes had gone through. And, and, you know, he said, I think it's just because of the, uh, you know, the state had you know, lost some infrastructure and had to relocate some of these offices uh, the state, you know, that do the background checks. Like, yeah, okay, plausible. Well, then, like three days later, the bottom falls out of society and everybody's out buying guns. And it was so bad that in Tennessee, they, they were cutting, like they were telling people like two hours before ticks, the T- uh, Tennessee uh, instant check system, before Tix was, you know, shutting down at like seven o'clock at five o'clock in the afternoon or whatever time they closed, like maybe it's nine, but like two hours before I was hearing, they're cutting people off and they're saying, we're not accepting any more applications today, period. Because it, it, you know, with two hours remaining, we'll be lucky to catch up with the backlog. Um, okay, I get it. They weren't like just telling people, we're, you know, we're not going to sell it. We're going to shut down the, the check system or anything. They're like, no, nope, we just, you know, we got to cut you off two hours before, you know, Tix closes. And um, it's been that way pretty much ever since. So buying the guns here that you're New selling. Ham- here in New Hampshire, um, we do things a little bit differently. We don't call FBI for a background check. We have mm-hmm. to go through state police for mm-hmm. pistols and other. So it's unfortunate because the FBI kind of gives you an instant response, um, which is great because the typical background check takes five to seven minutes yeah. data entry and get the response and the customers on their way. But with the state police, it's always about a 15 minute thing. You call, give them the data, they do the inspect, they do the um, investigation, they call you back with an approval. Huh. And that typically turns around in about 15 minutes on a busy day and hour. Right. Um, I called one in the other day, uh, got a call back 37 and a half hours later. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. I, mm, man. Um, I know that our state and a few others have, uh, you know, like we, um, our governor, Good guy. I like him. A lot of folks are you know, being kind of critical, but again, walk on a mile in a man's shoes in the middle of the bubonic plague and see how good of a job you do. Um, mm-hmm. But he, uh, you know, he, he extended um, the handgun permit uh, registration period for anybody who was coming due like in the next you know, month, shoved it out like six months um, and you know, some stuff like that, which I thought was kind of nice. Uh, we're in the process of getting like true or, you know, semi-true constitutional carry. Um, and that's probably the one thing I would fault him for is that it's like, dude, just go ahead and fast track that, right? But, you know, I, I guess I also get, that's a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of thing. Because here he is having to deal with a lot of other stuff in the middle of a crisis. And, you know, what are the optics of that going to be if, uh, you know, the media decides to turn on him and, oh, well, you know, you, you couldn't get all these other things done, but you could sure get, you know, loosen handgun laws or, or whatever. And, you know, he can't win. So, um, I, I would like to have seen that happen. It just didn't. Um, you bought anything new lately? I mean, you've, so you've got the you've got the the X compact there, and I know we talk, I think we talked about that the last time we recorded, maybe, which is probably why I got the itch to try one myself. I'm guessing. Yeah. Um. No, I mean, gun wise, 
Um, I've had some parts kicking around. I built a couple ARs recently. Okay. Um, not because I need more, but it's like I have parts, and if it was like, oh, if I just buy one more of these, I'll have another complete gun. And <laughs> I'm kind of looking at those sorts of things yeah. as, as you know, it's just kind of more of my deep thought in the in the preparation of all this because I'm looking at those sorts of things with this gun grab as, you know, this is a potential, you know, revenue source for me sure. at some point. You yeah. know, AR-15s, you know, maybe a hot commodity a month or so from now where yeah. I might really need them to move. Um, uh, so I built a couple of those recently, a couple of uppers. Um, but I've been doing a lot of things like, like go bags, pouches, um, med kit, yeah, extra med kits. Yeah. Um, uh, what else? Uh, ham radios. Yep. Um, I am up to, I have... <laughs> I got my first one and I've got four others in route. Nice. Very so nice. I've got a couple few more handhelds in route. And then I picked up, you know, the one off of you to yep, the mount it in the vehicle. Yep. yep. For kind of like a vehicle mount. And I've yep. got, you know, an antenna system coming from that and for that. And uh, I'm going to work up some mounting solutions so I can keep, try and keep it like out of the way and discreet as possible, probably um, mounted in the vehicle. So I've been working on that. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, any extra funds um, and that sort of thing, it's just been kind of going into to making sure I have stuff that I may need. Yeah. Like I said, like I mentioned, uh, you know, upgrading security cameras and, you know, that sort of thing too. So I haven't really bought any new guns, though, that I can think of looking here. Not really. Yeah. Oh, no. I got a Wilson Combat what? matched receiver set. Oh, okay. I, you know, I immediately yeah. went to 1911 in my head and thought, yeah, it is the end of the world. But yeah, <laughs> Mark yeah. Payne was never before. Uh, yeah. Um, but no, there was a good deal on a matched receiver set, and I was like, ah, oh, that's a really good deal. I'm gonna jump on that. So that's cool. That'd be a fun one gonna, to build. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna turn that into something cool. Um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I mean, you can it's exciting. You, it's amazing, right? When you start thinking about ammo and quantity, um, you know, every time that you buy a case of a thousand, let's just say two, two cases of a thousand rounds of handgun or a case of a thousand round case of, uh, you know, five, five, six, and then maybe one or two other things you've, you've, that's like, that's cost of a gun, right? I mean, it's the cost of a handgun roughly. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's, I, I, you know, another, another thousand rounds of five, five, six, uh, and it was, I somehow got lucked in on it right before the bottom fell out. And I got some pretty good, um, you know, Lake City brass and stuff like that. Uh, I picked up another 500 rounds of uh, was it XM. Oh, God, I can't remember the green tip, um, which, you know, that's like, that's truly boogaloo ammo at that point. You know, because yeah, you really need steel core anything and and you know uh man it used to be cheap to buy that but uh it's not anymore um but that's 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 around in case the un you know blue helmets start showing up in my neighborhood and i feel like i need to make a statement um <laughs> the uh hmm. the joke <laughs> uh god you know really it's been more like really essential crap like we bought a television because yeah you know, i got got my uh, in-laws you know, staying here with us and, and, you know, man, they, like talk about people that I, I have realized I, we couldn't do this without them. Right. I mean, and I'm not like trying to be, um, you know, hyping that up and whatever, but yeah, they, they, they came here, uh, the weekend that my daughter was born January 31st and, uh, we're going to stay for a couple weeks or for a week, <clears throat> pardon me, to help my wife out. Um, you know, recovering from surgery and stuff like that. And then uh, I think we maybe talked about this. I jacked my knee up. Did we talk about that on the last yeah. episode? Yeah. I messed that all up uh, really good. I think you did. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I can't remember. That was stupid. You know, like gravity is my, my worst enemy. Um, second only to stairs and um, the stairs and gravity together worked to take me out of commission for, Oh hell, like nearly a month plus um, 
within the past week and a half, I've I've completely gotten away from any kind of like you know brace or compression thing on my knee, and and it's kind of back to normal. Even though I think later in the year, after you know, we've all kind of survived, um, you know the the, the Chinese virus. God, I love that. Um, you know, I'll probably have to go really look at maybe like meniscus repair surgery, which is kind of you know it sounds like oh my god knee surgery, but that, that's pretty pretty tame for knee surgery. I think I tore the meniscus. I definitely partially tore the uh, the MCL and then uh, either heavily bruised or maybe slightly tore the um, patellar ligament that goes over the top of the kneecap. And all those things, like right after this, the freaking weekend after my daughter was born. So like when I'm supposed to help my wife recover from mm-hmm. C-section surgery, I'm like laid up in the chair with my knee up in the air and you know, ice and everything else. Had to go to the orthopedist and, and get it all checked out. That's been sucky. Um, but hell, I forget how I got off on that tangent. Anyway, uh, yeah, that that happened. And, and um, you know, so with with my family, my in-laws being here, helping us out, like, for an extended visit, they've been just, like, troopers, man. Like, you know, in the evening, they'll go upstairs, and they disappear into the, the guest bedroom. And I guess they were watching TV and stuff on a, on a laptop. And I, I told my wife, I was like, we've got to do something for them. And, like, get them a TV or something for that room because, you know. Um, by this point, we're all quarantined together. But mm-hmm. yeah, and, and the important stuff: televisions, you know, electronics made in China. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Hey, we got some questions from listeners. So I'm running out of like yeah. my 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 stand up routine is sucking hard here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, question from listeners: If you stuck with us this long, congratulations. We're going to get to it, and some of these are fun. Uh, Brad asked, what's the appropriate amount of Hawaiian attire for the Boogaloo? <laughs> uh, I don't uh, think I have a single stitch of Hawaiian or I don't attire. either. I tried to once and you know, like it was a it was like a schmedium and it didn't fit. Uh, like Chris Farley's big man a little shirt or big man a little coat. Mm-hmm. Um I, man, like I, I'd say just be you, man. Yeah, wear as much of Hawaiian attire as you want, but if you're gonna do it. Go all out and you got to wear the grass skirt and, you know, shake it, shake what the, shake what God gave you. So I, I, I kind of wonder where did the Hawaiian shirt thing come in for the boogaloo? And if you're listening, wondering what the hell the boogaloo <laughs> is, it's, it's like, we're living in it kind of, sort of, I mean, like, you know, it's like the ultimate, what was it? the boogaloo is kind of like the, the slang for the ultimate uprising against the government, I think. Right. Which we're not. Man, you know what? I'm actually going to run dangerously low on his bourbon. I, I realize that. Like, I'm going to have to know. make a liquor stores in Tennessee have been declared essential businesses during this shutdown. And they're allowed to operate. No yeah, New Hampshire as well. I hear Michigan is turning all liquor sales off as of uh, the 31st. Well, there's a state you don't want to visit anytime soon. <laughs> so, well, yeah. they have a month. So, oh, yeah. you know, they're just going to be stocking up. Right. I thought this was silly. I mean, like they're doing like um, curbside beer deliveries um, and, and things like that, which you know was not allowed in Tennessee. And the governor, you know, like quickly moved on that. I was like, why would you do that? Of all the things. And and then finally, my wife, being smart, being a nurse, said, we kept beer in the hospital, in the pharmacy, because you don't want people detoxing. And I was like, I don't understand. She's like, the hospitals don't need a bunch of detoxing people showing up in the middle of the plague. So we need to keep the alcohol flowing. I was like, ah, so Tennessee is full of high functioning alcoholics. Got it. Um, so, <laughs> wow, I yeah. never knew that. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I made perfect sense after she said it. I was like, you know, I guess you're right. So yeah, no, they don't like if if they cut off the supply, and then people start detoxing at home, and then you know they go to the ER, then they're competing against people that have, you know, COVID. And like, well, that makes sense. So yeah, man, that's why. But I, I need to go. I like I've I've had the first casualty of, of the coronavirus in my house was a bottle of makers or not maker. It was a uh, Woodford reserve. Well, yeah, yeah that's sad, but uh, anyway, yeah. so yeah, <laughs> Hawaiian attire, uh, the boogaloo, rent it, uh, whatever you want to wear, man. I mean, if you just want to wear two coconuts and a grass skirt, I'm not going to stop you. It's the boogaloo. That uh, was Jordan. No, that was Brad. That's Brad. Brad. Okay, Brad. Yeah. Pictures, please. Yeah, pictures of that. Yeah, truly. I, I really do, especially the two coconuts. You could place Brad those coconuts skirt. wherever you want, right? Um, grass skirt, Brad. <laughs> grass skirt. 
Shake that. Shake it. Man, I, I need a I need a hula dance. Uh, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie asked us, he said, will this pandemic give rise to a modern adaptation of the twelve of the Tuller drill called the Corona drill at six feet instead of 21? And I admired, I admired the lengths to which he went to make that joke because, you know, <laughs> hadn't really thought about it, but if you, yeah, the, the, the six feet, six foot drill, the Tuller drill. I had just gotten used to doing the, uh, what, what was the guy's name? Um, you know, white or, or uh, whatever the, 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 the dude, the, the hero of the, of the, uh, white settlement, Texas church shooting. Um, oh my God, what's his name? Um, mm, I am drawing a blank. I, I'm going to yeah, so <laughs> like, it's been so that was years ago. It really wasn't Jack Wilson, Jack Wilson. Go. Golly. If it didn't start with a C or in a virus or a vid, I wasn't going to remember it. Um, you know, we kind of like been doing the Jack Wilson drill at the range before this all happened. You, know, you go to the range and just cold out of your holster, you know, at, at roughly 50 feet. Can you hit, you know, the center of the head of a, of a you know, silhouette target? Um, and that's a fun one. I advise everybody try that. But now we're going to do the, the Corona drill at six feet. Pretty personal. So. There you go. I guess Eddie, do you do you are you supposed to do that drill with like like a package, like a 48 roll package of toilet paper under one arm? Or <laughs> you know, what do you what do you do there? Um yeah. I think to to mix that up, I think really you should have to. You should have to have like a, a lot of hand sanitizer in your in your weak hand mm -hmm. and like a 48 roll package of toilet paper in your <laughs> strong hand. And you're not allowed to drop any of that crap, but you still have to draw. So Something's going between your knees, right? Something's yep. got to, because you drop any of it, it's gone. You know the the <laughs> the, the vagrants, the 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 vultures will defend and steal your toilet paper, your hand sanitizer. So I think There's Eddie, no doubt about it. Need need video, need video of this one. So don't I don't want you to disappoint us. We need to see it. Um, like, uh, how much Matthew asked? How much ammo? Uh, how much ammo should we have stocked body armor, prepping pistol caliber carbines and holster setups for the boogaloo? Um, man, <laughs> you know, people are asking me a lot of like, what do you think we should do? What do you think? Of, what do we think about this? And I was like, the problem is nobody knows, right? There, yeah. It, there's just too much unknown. This and is the scenario the I would have envisioned. I mean, you, yeah. is this how you would have thought that we were going to, like being, nope. uh, yeah, I mean, I, this is what I thought we were going to face, right? I just didn't. Um, it's so similar in so many ways to a lot of the really crappy scenarios that we've talked, that we've talked about. I mean, you know, we've even jokingly, not joking. I mean, we kind of have hardly talked about, you know, the what ifs of uh, like an EMP strike or whatever. And you talk about that stuff, you know, three weeks ago, you were a, you were a nut. You know, you were a fringe lunatic. You know, the, the grid's not going to collapse. Society's not gonna collapse. You're always gonna be able to go buy ice cream at the at the grocery, and here we are. So, mm -hmm. I guess what we're living through right now is very similar in a lot of respects to some of the things we talked about. Man, this really makes me think about Tony Tory, you know, getting him, you know, Urban Survival Craft, the episode that we did with him. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, but he's I bet he's busy right now, consulting. Um, and how much ammo should you have stocked? <laughs> Let me tell you what my strategy is moving forward, right? I, I've always had my strategic reserve, um, and that was like enough defensive grade ammo, you know, Federal HST, uh, you know, Remington, uh, whatever the heck is Gold Sabers, uh, Black Belt. I think that's Remington. Anyway, uh, yeah, I had that stuff all set aside, um, similar to what I carried. And I had enough that, you know, I could do some work with it in, in a bad scenario, you know, if like things collapsed. Also had a lot of FMJ. And that's like, man, if, if I'm dipping into the FMJ for, for defense, we've we've really crossed a bridge, right? Because, you know, that's not really ideal. But, um, you know, in 556 and 9 and, and, you know, 762 by 39 for one of the AKs and that kind of stuff. So, I, you know, I had, I had stuff that was like my strategic reserve. Not enough. In my opinion, but I had stuff, um, and then I had my 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 supply of range ammo or training class ammo, 
And this scenario has has made me kind of like push those two piles together. And, and now it's like, well, they're all strategic reserve. I'm not going to the range any. And I've heard that from a lot of people, Mark. Like there's not many people going to the range, you know, burning up ammo, um, supposedly, even though last weekend I went to the range and you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have known it. Um, a lot of people there shooting. But uh, it's it's made me cancel training classes. I had a training class I was going to do in April. Not going to do that now. Well, for a variety of reasons, can't. You know, but even if we could, I wouldn't go burn the ammo for it. Um, so I think moving forward, I'm gonna. I mean, it's gonna be a one for one thing. If I buy a box of training ammo or a box of uh, you know defensive or, or target ammo, I'm buying a box of strategic reserve ammo, and I'm gonna build both of them up. You know, about the same speed. Um, uh, extra guns? No, I just don't. I mean, if you don't have them already, you can't get them really right now unless yeah. you're doing it on the secondary marker or paying out the nose for it. Uh, yeah. Pistol caliber carbines. Man, I don't know. What do you think about pistol, pistol caliber carbines? I've kind of fallen out of love with them. So did I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love the fact that that I could have a essentially AR platform mm -hmm. that will have the universal fuel as my EDC pistol. Yeah. Right. So max on the carbine fit the pistol, max on the pistol fit the carbine. Um I just there's something about a five five six rifle that I just if the shit's hitting the fan my only use for the pistol is going to be to get myself to my rifle. Agreed. And um, I forget who it was. The, uh, I think it was a little quote, like the purpose for a pistol is to fight your way to a rifle. I, you know, something along those yeah, lines. I, I think that was Cooper. That was, yeah, I think it was Cooper, I actually. It was Jeff Cooper. Yeah. Um, and I'm very much of that mindset in that I have five, five, six rifles stowed in a couple of locations. I have approximately 60 magazines loaded in multiple locations in multiple bags in multiple scenarios so that i can always be at them if i needed them um yeah i just um i'm kind of i i mean i i, I think it's a little bit fun yeah but if if i'm going to a situation where the shit is at the fan i'm not going for a nine millimeter bullet today. I, I agree yeah i yeah they're fun for for a like a plinking you know, weapon so here, here's the thing right i guess if if nine millimeter ammo is plentiful and you you can go buy it you know at the drop of a hat which right now is kind of hard to do um having a nine millimeter ar platform to go take a class or just remain kind of, you know, you know, keep, keep proficient with the AR platform, maybe makes sense. You know, Cause you can shoot that all day long for half the price or less than five, five, six. Uh, but if you're really training, like for the purpose of getting better and, you know, being proficient, whatever, then you want the, you want the rifle to shoot the cartridge that you're going to really be shooting with it in, in, you know, reality. And, and I, you know, there's no substitution for, Five five six. If you're, you know, trying to be proficient with a five five six gun, mm -hmm. so I would just say, you know, it's a toy in my opinion. You know, it's just a toy. I, I I want the I want the real thing. Um, but yeah, I holster setups for the boogaloo. If it's truly the boogaloo, man, it's time for open carry thigh thigh holsters and you know, um, yeah. No, you don't need a holster for your <laughs> rifle. <laughs> no, not for a rifle. But I guess that you know he's. About just you know, holster seven in general. I hope, um, you know. Um, I don't know, man. I I'm still of the mindset. It's that, yeah, yeah. I still don't want anybody to know. If 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 I'm pistol only, no rifle. I right. still don't want anybody seeing it. Yeah, but if, if you're like yo, know, if if you're like Book of Eli, and you're walking around with like your bag on your back, and you know your mm -hmm. machete and you know your shotgun and things like that strapped to your bag, you you, you know the gig's up. People know that you're armed. I guess. Um, I guess, mm. yeah, what, what's the scenario, right? Uh, like you, if it's stealth, then I still want my handgun. I want it concealed. If all bets are off, you know, mm. <laughs> I'm carrying my rifle in my hand and I've got my you know, gun and, and whatever holsters, you know, my pistol, whatever holster is convenient. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to hide anything at that point. So, 
Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, next question. Tyler said the amount of new gun owners and your guys thoughts on that. Well, we kind of talked about that already and all the ammo shortages and where the industry goes from here. Uh, Mark, yeah, you can there's, talk there's more part, authoritatively on that one. I think, I think there's part of it, part of it that I think that we didn't touch on that. I, and I'd like to be able to make sure to say is if, is if you've landed at this podcast and you are a new gun owner, right? Absolutely. We welcome you with open arms to this community. Hundred percent, and agree with that. And we will be one hundred percent supportive in any way that we can here at Shooters Nation yep. and at Squared Away Customs and most any other business that I think that we've had for guests on here or talked about on here. Absolutely, um, yeah. would be the exact same way. And don't hesitate to reach out to any of us ever if you have questions, concerns. And don't 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 think your um, question is too dumb to ask because. There are absolutely there are not. gun absolutely people not. in quotes, gun people that ask some really dumb questions. So don't feel like you yep. you you couldn't ask that question because you might be thought stupid or silly or whatever else. Just ask the question. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, that being said, I, I do fear that there is a lot that are not going to take the time. They're going to think this is a switch. I have the gun. And now yep. I'm safe. Or they're going to sell it and... in six months when this whole thing blows over. Hopefully it blows over. Right. But, and man, oh man, it's a secondary market going to be flooded with good mm. deals then. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be an interesting effect on the secondary market for sure. It's going to be a buyer's yeah. market, not a seller's. There's going to be so many G2Cs out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, I think it's really hard to say, Tyler. I mean, I think so much depends on the direction that this goes and how well we keep our distance and how well this, this bubble pops. Yeah. And that that's just the thing. It's another thing. Like we nobody knows what's gonna happen. Right. Nobody can definitively tell us that, that we're all gonna be in a much better place two months from now. And we or hope we we're are. gonna be in a much worse place for two months from now. You know? Yeah. I mean, I've got some theories on it. Yeah, you know, I think economically is where we're gonna really take our hit. You know, I think Oh boy. Um yeah. small business, food service oh, industries. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's bad from that perspective, right? I man, I'm gonna say I I'll go on record as saying this. If you've got ammo and you've got a gun, then you're in, you're in good shape from that perspective. If you can pick up more ammo without jeopardizing yourself financially, go ahead and do it if you can find it. But I wouldn't sacrifice anything further than that to go into debt. And, and like I would, I would try to stay out of debt as much as I could right now because I think the 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 ripple effect of what's happened around the globe is going to be staggering. Staggering. I hope that we've learned something from this and we bring a lot of supply chain and a lot of manufacturing, a lot of everything else back into this country and, and you know, especially take it away from China. Um, I don't think I'm not one of these people that thinks that China created this virus, but I think they, you know, uh, irrefutably, I, I think that they have completely, they covered it up for too long and it, it screwed the rest of the world. And, and they did it because that's just what the Chinese communist government does. They control everything and, and they want you to believe that it's just perfect and they got it all under control and you know it's a it's a utopia and i think they just they dick the rest of us hard by keeping a lid on it until it was busting past their borders and, and then they had to you know the gig was up they had to tell everybody what was going on um so hopefully you know businesses yank a lot of business you know business away from china and and you know um but my fear is that the american consumer is going to do what we do and we love iphones and we love televisions you know, pointing at myself and other cheap shit that comes from, from China. And we're just going to go right back to buying it. You know, even though mm -hmm. we ought to, we ought to stick it to them, I think. And, you know, even if not maliciously, we need to stick it to them just by bringing things back in house so that we're not strategically dependent upon or not dependent upon other people for strategic long-term things. Um, you know, the ammo shortages and where the, where the industry goes from here. I hope that we don't see a lot of gun shops pop up out, you know, like weren't there yesterday, but here they are today trying to capitalize on this. Because I remember what that was like after 2012, 2013, 2014, once you got into, um, you know, it looked more and more like Trump was going to be elected. Um, a lot of gun shops just went under. And if you get into that business thinking that it's quick, easy money, um, you need to be, you need to have a strategy to get out of it quick. Um, and then that doesn't do a service to anybody in the in the, in the community anyway. Um, so it's probably not an industry to get into if you think, man, I could sell guns and make a fortune. 
But yeah, you could. Long if, you, time. if you had a if you had a warehouse full of them, you could have. But yeah, you, know, you can't yeah. get them to sell them. Um, so. And I'll, I will throw this out there. If you are a listener and you're having a hard time locating ammo, don't yeah. hesitate to reach out to me. I have some some very, very good connections within this industry and can yep. confidently tell you that I can probably get you squared away pretty easy. So just email me mark at shootersnation.com and I'll do what I can to uh, to get you set up with somebody that can help you with ammo. I had some guys on my team at work ask me about that and I will, I'm going to hook them up with you. Um, yep. You know, uh, where the industry goes from here also, uh, if you follow Mr. Guns and Gear on media, uh, social media, you know, you probably have already heard this. If you don't, you probably should because, you know, if you're not getting, if you're not getting the inside scoop, you know, and, and getting connected, you know, from somebody like Mark, then Mr. Guns and Gear can kind of point you to the the sales and stuff. But I'll say, man, he, he like, <laughs> he'll post a, a supply of ammo on Facebook and 10 minutes later it's gone because his followers go and deplete it. They're like, you know, the plague of locusts descending on it. So you got it, you got it quick, but he's made the comment and I've seen several things you know, floating around. Mark, you can maybe tell us accurate or not, but uh, the ammo manufacturers saying, look, the prices are going up. No, they are already yeah. three of the major ammo manufacturers have already um, mentioned anywhere from three to 8% increases. Yeah. And, you know, I think they've been pretty transparent about that. You know, they they said, hey, look, our prices are going up. Here's why. Here's how. Here's a struggle that we're going through right now to get this stuff. Um, but, you know, bear in mind, folks, that, like, before you start being super critical of them, you know, the Trump slump was a real thing. And and there were a lot of companies laying people off and closing factories and whatever else when, when you know, the world or when, when America felt like, well, Trump's got it. It's not going to be Hillary Clinton. We don't have to panic. They quit buying things. And, you know, a lot of companies had ramped up post Newtown, post Newtown Connecticut shooting, the Obama era. They had ramped up production and, and staffing and everything else. And then suddenly inventory wasn't moving out of their warehouses. The warehouses, so they had to, you know, scale back. And now they're being asked to turn on a dime and ramp up at an even higher level. And you know, that, that stuff doesn't happen cheap, right? So they're going to, cost of ammo is going up. It just will. Um, so if you, uh, you know, if you're one of these guys that's six months from now bitching about the fact that ammo is still expensive, well, just be glad there's any ammo to buy, you know, because mm -hmm. after 12, it was very hard to find that stuff. Uh, yeah. So, uh, last question I want to get to, this was actually more serious. So, uh, Joni, uh, asked and, 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 uh, just a few listeners on this, Joni's one of my most, <laughs> most favorite people. She was my, my boss uh, for a couple of years. And, um, you know, she, uh, man, she, she, she did things right. They, they set themselves up so they could retire early and, and, you know, young and go out and enjoy things and enjoy life and travel and whatever else. So, uh, I, I miss her a lot at work. And, and so I was happy to see her, her right in. And she said, Hey, can you talk about the legality of taking guns across state lines? Uh, and especially if you got, if you got an ass pocket full of ammo, uh, trying to move to Florida, but you know, if I get stopped, I don't want to be in jail. And so, uh, you know, the, the good news about that is that moving across state lines with guns and ammo is not all that hairy. Uh, you know, first thing is check with the, check with the state, check on the state laws where you're going. Um, you know, they're, they're pretty good resources for that. Um, off the top of my head, I'm thinking like handgun laws or handgunlaw.us, uh, has a pretty good, you know, um, uh, list of what the, the, the firearms laws are in, in other, uh, states. And, uh, you know, especially like if you're driving there, you check the states that you'd be driving through just to make sure that, you know, you're observing the, the safe, uh, you know, way of, of keeping out of the, the, the state troopers car. Uh, you know, you may have to keep gun and ammo separate, locked up in containers, things like that. Uh, you know, some states you pass through now, now fortunately moving from Tennessee to, to Florida, I mean, there's only so many ways you can go there. You're either going to go through Alabama, or you're going to go through Georgia, and um, you know that's they're both gun friendly, so you're you're good. Um, if you're flying, you know you got to you know look at uh, how you fly with with weapons and, and you know check it as check baggage unloaded in locked containers, et cetera, et cetera. And, and we I think we actually did an episode on that like a while back. I'll have to find it and I'll drop it in the show notes. But um, you know moving. Check the state laws where you're going. 
uh, Florida is fairly gun friendly. So I don't think you have to worry about that. And again, you know, going through Alabama and Georgia, um, you got a Tennessee permit. They have reciprocity with us and, uh, you know, you can, um, you know, just plow you know, right on through on the, on the interstate, not being any risk there. Uh, but if you have to pack it, yeah, I'd say just, you know, the other thing is, it, you know, for anybody that's moving, um, pack your guns carefully, right? Uh, you know, especially if the moving company's going to be handling them. Uh, lock them, if at all possible, you transport them, right? But, you know, just pack them up in the, in the cases they came with and make sure that they're secure and they're not going to get banged around, beaten up, and things like that. Uh, again, good to keep ammo separate from, from the gun, uh, unless it's the one that you're carrying you know, for a variety of reasons. Um, there's actually Mark. I, this is kind of an interesting one for me. I, I, I confess I wasn't super uh, aware of this to begin with, but it's called FOPA, the Firearms Owners Protection Act. Are you familiar with that one? No, I wasn't either. And like I had to like, what is this? And so um, it was designed to protect firearms owners uh, transporting their possessions across state lines. And so uh, you know they they kind of tell you, hey, look, you still have to actively take steps to be in compliance and know the, know the laws of the state you're going through, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, it, it may not protect you from being arrested. Um, but it, it, it considers like in some, like they give an example on this one website I was looking at. They, they said that like New York, for example, can, will consider, you know, if they're so inclined, the act of affirmative defense, which means that it can be invoked after you're arrested. Uh, and FOPA is kind of like that. If, if you're transferring, you're transporting things you know, through to move. Um, I wouldn't like necessarily want to test that in a, in a you know, gun unfriendly state. I'd want to research the the laws on, on how guns can, you know, need to be transferred in that state. Again, maybe taken apart, you know, stored away from ammo and locked containers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but yeah, you know, just take the most cautious, cautious approach. Um, and you know, you should be fine. If, if you're going to use a moving company, um, Talk to them first too, and say, "Hey, look, I've got guns. I'm, I'm you know, firearms. Should I transport those myself, or can you transfer them? You know, transport them for me in the moving trucks?" I'd be a little wary of that because I don't like to have my guns in other people's you know, possession. But um, yeah, yeah, no, it makes me nervous. Yeah, so uh, yeah, some some companies, moving companies, have policies about uh, firearms. So you just want to ask them what their protocols are, uh, you know, that kind of thing. I can tell you one thing for sure. Yeah. If, and I can't imagine a scenario where I would need this to be the case, but if I was to have a firearm in a moving company, there damn sure wouldn't be anybody that knows the firearm was in the moving company's position. Uh, yeah. Um, so I don't know how you, I guess, you know, if you're interacting with the fire, with the moving company and asking like the management about it, um, uh, you know, I might just ask them, you know, now that you and I've had this conversation, are your movers going to know this or are they going to be unaware? And you know, no, you sent a anonymous a email yeah. prior. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know go. what I mean? Get like a burner. In my, yeah, address. exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Because, <laughs> you know, and like people tell me all the time when they need to ship firearms, it's like, okay, do I tell the people at the UPS store what's in the box? I'm like it's none of no, their business. That's right. Not. It's none of their business whatsoever. Yep. You're mailing it legally. You're mailing it to a FFL. You're receiving it from an FFL. Like, it is nobody's business what's in that box. Yeah. Period. Um, the other the other thing that I thought about was, you know, just tra traveling in general across state lines when I'm armed. Um, yeah, there's there's like there's this is almost like asking somebody, Ford or Chevy, which is better? You know, what what church denomination is better? You know, what what soft drink is the best? What beer is the best? Um, should you inform or should you not inform the law enforcement officer if you're pulled over? for any reason. And, you know, I mean, I've, I've, we've got friends that we respect that, that are in law enforcement that are like, you know, one guy says one thing, the other guy says the other, you know, I mean, I kind of take the middle on that one. Yeah. I don't tell them, but I hand them a permit. That's what I do, which I guess is essentially me telling them without verbally the words coming out of my mouth. I have a gun. Cause that's all they're going to hear. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I give them my license, and my permit, and then I let them ask, you know, where is it? Do you have it? Are you armed? Some of them didn't care. Some of them was like, okay, thanks. Um, you know, and and if they ask, I'm like, yeah, I do. Hey, I just wanted you to know, right? I, I just, you know, I I care about your safety and mine. I just wanted you to know that I've got it. And I think, 
you know, I've not had a bad experience like that in Tennessee or Kentucky. Um, yeah, you know, where I've I've had you know like been pulled over for speeding or like you drive through a roadblock because they're doing alcohol you know roadblocks and things like that. I've not had a bad experience, not one. Every officer has either just not cared and not said a word about it, give it back to me. Uh, one actually asked, you know, okay, cool, you know, you don't you know get yours out, I won't get mine out. What are you carrying? You know, it's like, well, you know, it's 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 in my center console. Well, why isn't it on you? Well, it's uncomfortable in the car. Yeah, but what happens if you're in a wreck and it goes, you know, flying around the car? Or what happens if somebody tries to carjack you? And, like, the guy was lecturing me on why I needed to carry. And I thought, well, that's that's kind of cool, right? You know, but I've not had a bad experience yet. Yeah. Not not one of them that said, right. All right, you know, hey, asshole, get out. You know, spread eagle on the pavement right now. Um, so, uh, I think it just, you know, depends on how you act. And, and I know Johnny, and she's, you know, she's not going to, she's not going to draw that kind of attention from a, from a cop, she doesn't look like somebody that's up to no good. She flies under the radar. So, um, <laughs> uh, I hope that answers the question. I wouldn't be super worried about it. I think where you're going, you're you're in good shape. In the states that you're probably going to drive through, you're in good shape. Um, be careful. Hate the fact that you're moving. Um, you know, come back and visit. Uh, golly, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of like out of out of stuff, and and we're an hour and forty five minutes into this, and I don't know. I guess we can save some things for the next show. And, and I'd like to do a, a hangout and ask, you know, what, what the people want to hear about. But right now, like, it seems like the world is focused on coronavirus and. As it should be. Yeah. What sucks, man, is like, there's not a, there's not an, there's no NRA annual meeting coming up. NRAM canceled, done, not happening this year. It was going to be right. here. By, I, I was supposed to be, I was going to be leaving for Nashville here pretty soon. Yeah. It is right here in hometown. And. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. Uh, I saw that. I don't know who the guy was. I, I, I'm drawing a complete blank. It was somebody on social media, um, like a like an influencer, quote unquote, in the gun industry, was saying, "Hey, you know, if you were gonna if you were gonna, you know, release or announce a, a new firearm or gear or whatever at NRAM, send it to me. Let you know, I'll I'll feature it. We'll get it out there for you and whatever. And I, you know, that's kind of cool, I guess. It's like I think that. Uh, it's a shame that the NRA is not in any better shape than it is because, you know, in better times, maybe they would do like a virtual NRAM where, you know, we could all go see these things online and, and whatever. But um, I'm, I'm kind of anxious to see what comes out in the next few months, if anything new, right? Um, yeah. I mean, are you aware of new stuff that's still going to be released? I'm not asking you to, like, tell me what it is, but. I am not. Yeah. And it's strange, but I think that, they they do a really good job because it's so easy for the bubble to pop and secrets to get out. So sure. they do a really good job of keeping things very, very, very quiet. Typically before an event, before the release, I would hear about it two to three weeks out. So I'd yep. start hearing about the stuff now. Okay. But my thought is we're probably not going to because everybody's ramping up on everything else that's important and sounding like freaking crazy. Yeah. You know so what you I mean? think these things will like just um, silently launch and then they're just like tomorrow they'll be out there? That's my feeling gonna... is no, I think I think it's gonna be a very lot of a lot of soft launches. Okay. Like FN FN just launched a new pistol, nobody even knows about yeah, the 503? it. The five oh three? The five oh three. Oh hey, dog. look. Nobody's even talking about it. Yeah. I um uh, I'll tell you the other thing I saw this past week that it was like I told you, I was like, hey, look at this. I've had one of these for a while. Of course you have. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been on an NDA on that one. Right, for, yeah. Boy, so, uh, sometime. I'll go ahead. I, I mean, of them right here. Yeah. Do you really? Yeah. Damn it. Um, yeah, so it's the, uh, our, our friends over at Polymer 80, they, well, first thing is, you know, they got the PF9 SS, the single stack frame, which you've had one of those for a while. And I think you maybe even showed that yep. on the last episode, you know, when you and I were talking. Man, we got to start doing YouTube. But anyway, uh, you know, that's cool. So that's like, you know, the, the a better version of a, of a frame for a Glock 42 or 43. But the thing that I was kind of geeking out on was the fact that Dan McCallman and those dudes over at Palmer 80, like have kind of slipped in the industry to snuck it in there. The PF 320 P Tex P T E X grip module, which as you might expect from the name P PF 320 is for the SIG 320. It is sticky. And yeah, Dad, gummit, man. So they need Dan. Dan, if you're listening, compact module. 
that needs to be next. This one's for the what the full size and the carry. I think is was what yeah. this is. Yeah, yeah. We need compact module or or David needs a full size. We can take that angle too. I'm good with that. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, I'm I'm excited to see that one. That, that's gonna be neat. Um, you know, and you know, why the heck wouldn't you do this as a company if uh, you know if, uh, if if you can manufacture a polymer frame better than the one that Sig makes, which couldn't be hard because theirs is still kind of lackluster. Uh, P80, man, talk about somebody that's strategically just in the right place to do it. I'm excited about it. It looks cool. It looks very cool. Um, so yeah, need that in a compact like soon. Um, things that we know they're supposed to be coming out. You know, so Cloud Defensive has got the rain. That's supposed to be coming out soon. The rain. Yeah. yeah. So I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, man, you know, the, the FN503, that's cool. The little single stack, uh, like 509-ish type gun. I don't know, man. I, I just hope that like these companies, I, I'd have to think that they can't afford to not release it around the same time that they would have. Um, and it's going to be kind of like he's a soft launch or a lot of magazine, you know, social media launching, nothing at the, at the mm-hmm. thing. But, you know, hell, if they've already got it ramped up, production ramped up, they got to start selling this stuff to get their money back, start turning a profit. Um, yeah. And another thing, I mean, I don't know about you, not to completely shift gears here, but yeah. another thing I've been thinking is, is like, I don't know about you, but as this becomes more of a long and drawn out thing, which it sounds like it's going to be. Yeah, yeah. My time is going to start freeing up. So I think I'll so. be able yeah. to do some more recordings and right. you know, definitely I think we should do that hangout thing. I think that'd be great. Yep. Um, so if you're listening, definitely go join the Shooters Nation community Facebook group. Yep. Um, because we bounce a lot of data in there for for the listenership. And yeah, and that's where we're gonna put the hangout thing too, I think. You know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. We couldn't have like absolutely. a thousand people show up. That'd be kind of unwieldy, and I don't know that Zoom could even handle it, but um you know, we'll we'll do the hangout announcement in the in the listeners community for those of you that listen. So we'll announce yeah. that like ASAP. Man, I hope that it's I hope it levels out. I hope it settles down. You know, being in healthcare, uh, you know, like in the business out of healthcare, um, kind of fortunate, and I feel a little guilty, somewhat saying it that you know my wife's in healthcare, I'm in healthcare. Uh, we're not immune to uh, you know the economic impact of this, but. Um, you know, we've, we've definitely got work to do. Um, so that's keeping us busy and keeping us employed and, um, and everybody like, you know, Hey, you know, go company, you know, but, um, I, I honestly have not been more prouder of my employer than I am right now. And I, I don't want to you know, say who they are and stuff, but I mean, I am like legitimately proud of the way that they're handling this. And, you know, not only are how they're ramping up to help the, the, the community and, and respond to this, uh, you know, the viral outbreak and take care of patients and stuff, but um, yeah. that's how they're taking care of the people inside. And, um, you yeah, know, they're, they're well, doing the right and, things. Um, and as far as listenership is concerned, that shops with Scored Away Customs, we are definitely in full tilt um, as best we can. Uh, currently, there's no sign of us shutting down as we are a federal firearms license holder. Yeah. So that being said, that gives us kind of the pass and makes us an essential business um, in the state of New Hampshire. So no fear of us closing down anytime right. soon unless there's drastic changes state. But, but as a small business and, and, you know, you've got, you've got, you know, we got to keep Corey, we got to keep Corey off the streets, right? We got to keep him off the street corner Absolutely. because man, if, if like society is degraded to the point that, that Corey's making money on the streets, yeah, I don't know if we can keep off the corner, but no, we can keep I mean, off the streets. Yeah, I mean, but if he's if he's <laughs> if he, like he's even turning a profit on this on the corner, because you know, man, we've really sunk as a as a country if that's happened. But we gotta keep him off yeah. of there. Like we don't want him to go hungry, because yeah. yeah. you know, anorexic, underfed, male prostitutes, which he would be if he's going hungry, not not turning any <laughs> tricks. You know, we gotta keep him off the streets. So the the way to do that. The way to keep Corey off the streets and keep him from turning into an anorexic male prostitute is to send orders to Squared Away Customs to to order Kydex and keep him busy. Like it's hashtag no skinny mill gigolos, right? So we need mm-hmm. we need to keep Corey off the street. So yeah. send, keep those orders flowing to, to Squared Away Customs. That's a pretty good plug. And frankly, guys, keep keep your orders going. 
It's a small business. Small business. Period. Absolutely. You know, look for ways to support them. Um, I've even seen like going off on a like a tangent. I saw uh, like some of the local tattoo artists that um, I follow, and, and yep. you know, I've got some ink, and, and yeah, it's fun. Uh, like they're hurting right now because they were one of the first businesses. They're like, yeah, hey, you and barber shops and nightclubs, you you shady businesses like barber shops and tattoo artists. Some I got lumped in the same, but yeah, hey, you're in like super close proximity to your to your customer when you're doing this work. Um, they're like, you got shut down. Because, you know, we can't, there's no possible way that you can avoid, um, you know, spreading C-19. And um, so, like, really talented artists that make some good money here in Nashville are now suddenly, like, jobless. And, uh, you know, they started some GoFundMes, or their their customers have started some GoFundMes to help keep these people, you know, just alive. You know, keep them fed, keep their lights on, keep, you know, keep groceries on their table. And, hell, man, if, like, You've got somebody like that that's in a quote unquote non essential business, um, and they've got the opportunity for you to help support them. And you're in a position to do it, maybe think seriously about doing it, right? Because I think that, you know, this, this thing that we're in right now, Mark, can go one of two ways. Either it exposes how ugly and selfish we are as a population, and we all just hoard toilet paper, or it exposes how good we are and how much we take care of our, our, our fellow man. And man, I hope it's the latter right i I really hope it's the latter i I feel like that's still the the glue that that keeps america together and what makes us great so you know whether they're a small business in the the firearms industry or elsewhere um check on your peeps they may not be doing good and maybe you're in a position to help them out um so i guess a good place to stop and then we'll come back and do an episode again soon i kind of feel like we're going to talk more because cabin fever like I love my kids. I got a six-year-old, a two-year-old, and, a, and like a two-month-old. She's two months today. But, um, you know, them and my wife, my in-laws, we run out of things to talk about. So this this, this is like an outlet for me. So mm-hmm. um, this is good. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. All right. So we'll wrap it up. Uh, how do people keep Corey off the streets? Uh, ScoredAwayCustoms.com. Use coupon code SHOOTERSNATION for yeah. all your kydex needs and desires yep yep and, and you know just there's always a there's a there's a comment box when you place an order with shooter with with squared away customs shooter nation squared away customs um and you know you can you can you can put notes in there for Corey, right you can you can you know, he sure does get a kick out of them. you can <laughs> you can make them really like questionable about your your morals and your your ethics and and your eternal destination and and ask him to do really disturbing things or you know, you just say, hey, Corey, this is, you know, to keep you off the streets. So, you know, maybe use his comment box and, and make his day. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I bet some of those are pretty disgusting, aren't they? I mean. Some of them are a little. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A little uh, disturbing. Sporty. Yeah. Sporty. Yeah. yeah, sporty. A little spicy to, to, to keep it. Yeah. Oh, my God. All right. Um, we still want to see videos from Brad, coconuts, and uh, grass yeah. skirt. I don't need videos. A picture will do for me. Really? I kind of love it. <laughs> like, like an animated GIF would be good. I don't know. Uh, Eddie, I'm, I'm going to need a video of the Corona drill. And a, again, support hand full of hand sanitizer, strong hand full of 48 pack of toilet paper, and you can't drop either one of them. And you got to draw and engage at six feet. So work on that. That'd be good. I want to yeah. see the video. Right. Um, and then for me, God, I guess, what is my email address? David at ShootersNation.com. Man, if you tried getting on ShootersNation.com today, you were in for a surprise. It wasn't there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> God. I, uh, part of the reason why I was already, I had a glass of bourbon before I ever showed up for this recording was that was an all-day fight to, you know, in between doctor's visits with my daughter, which is a totally different thing. Like, you know, doctor's visits from home, telemedicine, it was fun. Um but, you know, like at eight o'clock this morning, I trashed our web server and was like, oh, God, I shouldn't have pressed that button. And, uh, you know, finally got it online like five minutes before we started recording. So great success. But, yeah, you can email David at ShootersNation.com. I know you get Mark at Mark at ShootersNation.com. Uh, you can just visit ShootersNation.com and celebrate the fact that it freaking works again um, and also sign up for, you know, mailing list and stuff like that man i feel like i I suck at using that mailing list for anything i'm really sorry about that uh 
yeah, I guess that's it. Share us with your friends. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. Good talking to y'all. Hope we didn't bore you. We got two hours out of this. You got two hours. You got two hours of not watching coronavirus news on the television. You're welcome. That's right. Instead, you heard us talk about <laughs> coronavirus. Oh my God. I think we're going to talk about it again. I mean, this isn't an escape, really. I don't know. Should we should we do an episode where like we talk about something else entirely? Like it's not even allowed. And if somebody t- like I th- I feel like that should be a panel show, Mark. Like we should get Jordan and Brad. Yeah. And maybe Steven and get Matt. Like, I think we should stack this thing full and, and it should be open mic, talk about anything. And whoever mentions it first has to take a drink. And anytime that they mention coronavirus, they have to take a drink. <laughs> that uh, one should be YouTube. That could be a good one. Yeah, that could be. That I'll won't pull up the green screen for that one. That won't last long. <laughs> that won't last yeah. long at all. Um, God, I don't know. I feel like I should say goodbye, but I don't want to. All right. Well, everybody, uh, thanks for joining us. Sorry it took us so long to get this episode out. Um, (laughs) We really did this for you, but it turned into being good for us. So thank you. Um, But we'll talk to you again soon. And in the meantime, be safe out there. Wash your damn hands. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. Seating segment was a production of the Shooters Nation podcast. Visit us online at shootersnation.com.